Michael Rosen, obviously, as people know, is very inspirational for young children. So this year we have commissioned a work from Michael with um, James Morgan and Juliet Pochin, young composers, um, who together have devised a piece called The Great Enormo. And The Great Enormo is a theme park and it's a time travelling theme park. It's an interactive guide to the orchestra, really, this piece, and it takes everybody on a whirlwind historical tour um, through the musical years, and it starts right back in medieval times and comes through to the jazz age. Um, so you really will get the, the full history of music. The Lunchtime series um, is one of the little gems of the, of the festival, I think. It's been going for about 20 years. We started it uh, as a means of giving a platform to young artists who really find it quite hard in their first early years uh, um, in the music business of getting going and getting their first recitals. Uh, since then, it's really developed into uh, a, a very important part of the classical programme. There's lots of those artists, young artists, who arrived in those first early years who are now really pretty senior in the music business and are international names. So it's been a fantastic platform for them to get their, their first concerts. There are, there are two other particularly important concerts in the Lunchtime series that are relating directly to Michael Rosen's um, themes and his inspirations. When we met with him, we were talking about um, his thoughts around Terezin and Theresienstadt, which is the concentration camp the, um, just outside Prague. But out of this particular camp came the most amazing art. And in particular, there were a lot of composers working there. Um, people like Victor Ullman, Pavel Haas, uh, Gidon Klein. And they were also playing music of their own native country. So there's a lot of um, Dvorak, Smetana, Janacek, Suk. So throughout the festival, um, you'll see these composers appearing. Um, in the lunchtime series, uh, the Cavalieri Quartet will play Janacek's Intimate Letters as part of their programme. And um, the Bush Ensemble, who are one of our young players, um, young ensembles, will play Suk's Elegy. And their concert's on the 8th of May. And that's a particularly um, poignant day because it was the 8th of May in 1945 that the Russians uh, liberated Terezin concentration camp. So, um, we're, we're kind of building up a focus. The most exciting concert for me will be the closing concert, uh, which is the Britain Symphonia, who uh, often perform with no uh, conductor, which is pretty unusual and a real skill. They're, they watch their leader, they listen to each other um, in a particular way. It's, it's, a, it's a very unusual thing, uh, but it does give um, real excitement to the music. And they're going to um, give us the European premiere of a work by Tarek O'Regan. Tarek O'Regan uh, came a few years ago uh, and we had another premiere of his which was fantastically well received. It was a brilliant piece. So this piece um, called Chabi uh, is, uh, promises to be just as exciting. Uh, it's teamed with the Mozart Ober Concerto with the soloist Nicholas Daniel. Um, who will also be directing the orchestra himself. And in the second half, we're very lucky to have the fantastic conductor Thierry Fischer, who is going to conduct our own Brighton Festival Chorus in a performance of Mozart's C minor mass. For me, there are, um, there are some really special highlights. Uh, Britain's The Canticles is one on Thursday the 9th of May in the Theatre Royal. This is a, a, a fantastic new uh, production and a collaboration with Aldborough Music. Neil Bartlett and Paulie Constable, two Brighton-based artists, are coming together and responding to the Theatre Royal, one of their favourite spaces in all the world, um, using five works of Benjamin Britten that are very well loved by audiences. Um, the canticles span Britain's career from the 40s to the 70s. And, uh, and this work will bring artists of uh, choreographers and visual artists together with Neil and Paulie and some of the finest musicians in um, to, uh, to explore these works, which are so well known in a completely new and different way. We're of course really thrilled about the new work that we're bringing to the festival this year. But I'm also really pleased to showcase work that has thrilled audiences across the country in previous years. 
One work in particular is How Like an Angel, which is a collaboration between Circa, the circus group, and Ifagellini, the choral group, and was part of the London 2012 Festival and Cultural Olympiad last year. It thrilled audiences in cathedrals around the country. We don't have a cathedral in Brighton and Hove, but we do have All Saints in Hove, which is a magnificent church and extraordinary architecture for this piece to be, uh, to be played out in. For anyone that really loved Janet Cardiff's installation at Fabrica two years ago, and the fantastic choral work Talus's Speminalium, the 40-part motet that was performed alongside it, this is a piece for you. It's, uh, it's a magnificent, meditative, and breathtaking experience. Uh, the audience promenade around the space whilst uh, the most extraordinary acrobatic work goes on at height and the work of Josquin, Victoria, and Hildegard von Bingen is, uh, is performed by Ifagellini. They're some of the best singers around. You have to come.